This is Drom Shakasuto. Thanks for watching. Please remember to subscribe and like this video. The verse is saying, is asking from the Creator, he is saying to him, If you like me, so teach me your ways that I'm gonna know you and you're gonna like me forever. And that's your people, those are your people. So Hashem is answering him, No worries. Soon I won't be angry anymore and I'm gonna set you all free. Everything will be perfect. So Moshe, Moshe was very brazen. He was very strong. Moshe is saying, If you're not revealing your loving kindness, not showing your smiling face, don't take us. We're not coming. If it's not on 100% redemption, with all the luxuries, when the share is on top of the cream, we're not coming, don't take us. We want complete redemption. <laughs> What's going to be the thing that will make us special, that we're going to know that you really, you took us seriously? You're taking us seriously, you care about us, that there's going to be a difference between us to the rest of the world. What is so unique? You're choosing us for what? What's the gift? Moshe knows how to bring down the bounty for all of us, for the wide world. So Hashem answered to Moshe, listen, also that thing that you asked me I'm going to do for you, because I like you. So Hashem is opening for Moshe the opportunity to speak more. He tells you, okay, I'll give it to you. Moshe doesn't stop. Okay, show me your honor. I want to see. Moshe is saying, you already got the promise. He already told you, yes, I'm giving. Whatever you want, whatever you wish. He says, okay, no, so where's the cash? Where's the money? Where's the check? Where, when are we signing? So Hashem is saying to him, אני אעביר כל טובי על פניך וקראתיך בשם השם. I'm going to pass all of my goodness, all of the bounty, all of the wealth, the holy wealth, everything you need, I'm going to give it to you. And I'm going to teach you and going to call you in my name. וחדותי את אשר אחון, and I'm going to reveal my mercy and have mercy on everyone. וריחמתי את אשר אחם. When we are talking about bringing redemption, bringing down the light of the Creator to the world, we need to understand that the Creator, He wants to give much, much more, many, many times more than we want to receive. We're all poor, we're all suffering, we all have problems in our lives, we all going through, we have challenges that there's no number and end to them. Everyone needs to fix his house, needs to fix himself, needs to fix his relationships with people, needs more money, everyone needs to be stronger and healthier. Everyone have numbers and numbers, piles of piles of things that needed for them. And they're all, it's a must, we must have it, we must, we need it. We, everyone feel that pain, everyone feel that hunger, everyone feels the darkness. But the Creator, He is telling us, look, in all the sorrow, in all the difficulties that you're going through, I'm experiencing the same with you. The only difference between us to Him, to the Creator, that He gave us our souls, and only because that we have those holy souls, we can feel and we sense and we understand the sorrow that makes us upset and makes us sad 
Because if we wouldn't have a soul, we wouldn't feel. We feel because that we're spiritual, because we're coming from a high source, a godly source, that it's Hashem Himself. And because of the fact that He gave us that soul, we can feel the distance from the root of our soul. The separation from the Creator is a painful experience for us, that's why we're suffering. Now the Creator, that He gave us that godly soul, He is the source of that soul. He is that soul. He is the Almighty. He is the Sea of Souls. He is above everything and He is only spiritual. Now our minds can fall into a deep sleep when we are being distracted by all kinds of distractions of the physical world. And we can forget our sorrow, we can forget our pain when we hear music, when we talk to other people, when we feel joy and happiness, when we're thinking about one thing, so we're not thinking about the, uh, things that were troubling and bothering us a few minutes ago. And we can be distracted. And those moments are helping us to survive. It gives us a lifeline, it gives us the power to continue and to move on at least we had a break for one hour, for two hours, maybe even for... There are people that live their lives in denial and they're not even thinking at all about the things that are so painful for them. And that is their remedy for now. For now, for them to forget completely about the horrible traumas that they experienced in their childhood or even a few minutes ago, it's impossible. So for them, it is a cure that they have that outlet, that way out from feeling the sorrow of separation from the Creator. We have that gift from heaven that we can go to sleep, go to eat, go to be distracted. But the Creator is always awake and He feels always and He sees always. And he also is so wise and great, so he realized the huge distance and the horrible destruction that took place in this world. And how low and how far the souls of his beloved ones went, went to. And he sees all of that and feels the pain, and it's an endless pain for the Creator. And there are many, many verses, especially those verses that were saying, in the days of Tisha B'Av, in days that we're crying on the destruction of Beit HaMikdash, in the days of Tshuva, when we're waking our own hearts up again to remember the destruction, to remember the horrible results of, of our sins, of, of the darkness. But today, we don't feel much. And on that, we need to cry. To wake ourselves up, it's to wake ourselves up to the fact that the Creator, He is with us when we are suffering and when we don't feel that pain. He's always with us. Now every one of us has got faith that was shining inside of His own heart even before we decided to serve the Creator, to become religious, or to keep Shabbat, or to keep Kashrut, or whatever. Even before of that, we had our soul. I remember myself as a child, as a secular child in a secular family. I, I had faith. I knew that there is one, someone. I was speaking to him. Without even being taught to pray, I knew that there is a creator to the creation. Maybe I didn't know how to define him, how to call him in his name, but there was someone that I was reaching out to in time of trouble. I was praying, I was calling, I was hoping for salvation. So my soul was communicating with me from inside, even before I knew how to call that creator, Hashem, God. Even before of that, my soul was talking to me. So to all of us, the light of the Creator is shining from within. And I'm saying it for one and only reason, that you will understand that inside of you, you have the code, you have the key for the purest, most complete faith of them all, the faith of an innocent child. 
because today, after we learned and went to hear many rabbis and read from many books and heard opinions and assumptions and theories, our mind been bent, been twisted by people's opinions. And even if the people that spoke to us were real righteous people and pure people, it doesn't necessarily mean that they aimed to the point of where we were standing in the day that we received information from them. When they were talking about that concept, about that issue, and they told us that we must do this and we have to do that, they were talking from a certain place, but we today are holding in a whole different situation. And we're not able to understand and to grab their holy intentions. And we must might misinterpret their intention completely and being drifted away to foreign places that no one ever wanted to send us to those places before. For an example, there are many people that want to come closer to the Creator. They want to learn Torah. They want to learn the wisdom of the Creator. They want to become Jewish or they want to learn how to, to execute their Judaism, to function as a Jewish, as a Hasid, whatever. So they're going and chatting and asking and learning and trying and then they feel, oh, I must dedicate more time for learning. I must mm, do many, many things. For years I was not keeping Shabbat, I was not eating kosher, so now I need to fix. So then they're getting all scared and they must set time for their learning and one hour a day is not enough. And suddenly you learn for two hours and you feel great and then two hours are not enough and you want to learn three. And then after four and five hours every day of learning, suddenly your family is looking at you with a weird look and they don't understand what are you doing. You become so narrow-minded and the truth is that you're losing your sensitivity to your friends, to your family. It might be your wife, it might be your husband, it might be your children and you want to be so righteous and you are counting on opinions of rabbis, of people that told you that Torah is the most important thing in the world and that you must dedicate your life to the Torah and they're right and no one can argue with those words but the volume is too high and needs some tunings to my level, to my ability. Yes, the water are very, very pure. Yes, it's delicious, but too much honey can become bitter and you can find yourself vomiting because of the sweetness of that sweet, amazing, pure honey. It can damage you because that it's honey, because that it's pure and you're not in that level. Also in the Torah, there are contradictions in the Torah. There are things that are discussing the same topic from different angles. And when you try to hold that wisdom, sometimes you come from the wrong side. Sometimes, sometimes you don't have the ability to grab it and to understand the message. And you're taking it because of your fear, because of your holy desire. But with the fact that you're still not mature enough, not right not ready enough, not qualified enough, and it can damage you, and it can ruin much, much more than if you would wait and drink another beer, and breathe, and go for another walk, and watch another movie, and chat with your friends outside in the streets for another 20 hours, those 20 hours free conversation on politics, on sports, on nonsense, on lust and desires might give you more power than two hours learning Kabbalah with, with the highest, highest secrets of them all in the most holiest, purest place in the world. Because you are not able to receive and to digest the quality, pure wisdom of Torah yet. So for you, it can become poison, lethal poison, and you must find your true self. And that's why I'm saying that the most purest and holiest faith that a person must connect himself to is the most innocent faith that is shining from within. Because inside of you, Hashem lives. 
בתוך עמי אנוכי יושבת, inside of my people. השם is saying to us, עשו לי מקדש ושכנתי בתוכם. From the time that you built the temple, and we built it already, it done, it happened once, it happened twice, we did it. It hopefully going to come today, again in the third time, but we, the obligation of building Beit HaMikdash, we accomplished it. We did it once and we did it the second time already. We built Beit HaMikdash. The third one built, will be rebuilt by the Creator Himself. It's not our job to build Beit HaMikdash. We can try to work on ourselves, to create credit for ourselves, merit for ourselves, to, to show Hashem, Please wake up your mercy and help us. We can try to him to like us. We can do the best that we can. But really to build Beit HaMikdash, it's not an obligation on us. This is something that will come down, a house that's made out of fire, made out of tears, made out of spiritual things, and it will come and be rebuilt and going to purify the world and change everything. Hashem said, that from the moment that we built Beit HaMikdash in the past, עשו לי מקדש ושכנתי בתוכם, and I'm going to live inside of you. Hashem is saying, inside of you, inside your mind, inside your heart, that is the light of your soul that is speaking to you from within, that wakes up the regret. and the desire to search for good, and not to give up on hope, and to restart your life, and to give yourself another chance. And all of the positive thoughts are coming from the light of your soul, a light that is already installed inside of you, that the Creator planted inside of you in the moment that He sent your soul into this world. And that is the light of of the Creator Himself that lives inside of you. And you must learn how to channel it outside through your being, using the talents and abilities and power that you received from the Divine One. And He gave all of us such tools, such amazing gifts, and they're all treasured inside of us. And sometimes you find yourself speaking in such impressive and inspiring way, and you look at yourself and you say, "Ha, ah, I know who I am. I'm a piece of junk. How can it be that those amazing words came out of my mouth, this filthy mouth? I know exactly what I'm doing with this mouth. I know exactly what I was doing, using it for two hours ago, five hours ago. I know who I am. I remember. Sometimes you can do amazing art, you can make amazing deals, sometimes you can, can talk to people, you can save lives of people, and you look at yourself and you remember, I'm full of wounds and pain and scars, my hands are filthy with blood and mud and filth, and I know my heart is impure, and you can suddenly find yourself so kind and generous and give your heart to other people. What's going on? You have a holy soul, and no one in this world can take that soul from you. No one can impure your soul. Even if a person is going to decide to read from the Siddur first time in his life, in the last day of his life, and he will say to Hashem, Elokai neshama shenatata bi tehorahi, the soul that you planted inside of me is pure. Your soul is a pure thing. Our problem is that we don't know how to recognize it, how to reconnect ourselves to it, how to use it. It's like that you bought the newest model of Macintosh, and you don't know what's installed, in, installed inside of it. You don't know how to use it. Even if you're a computer programmer, I'll tell you a secret, you don't have a clue what they put inside of it. You don't know how to use it. It's got so many more options and ways to use, and they haven't told it to you yet. You don't know. You don't know who you are yet. We don't understand the power of our being, the essence of our life, who we've been created to be. And the real righteous ones, the real ones, you know who are the real righteous ones? Those are not those scholars, those ones that are closed in Batei Midrashot for hours and hours in learning. They might be righteous ones over there as well, but doesn't necessarily bring them to purity and holiness. 
if his wife, she hates her life and she doesn't stand the fact that her husband is leaving her with all of the burden of their lives, with poverty, with sorrow, with pain, with frustrations. When he's coming back from Beit Midrash, she doesn't know how to respect her, how to show love, how to illuminate the house with the light of Torah that he took out from Beit Midrash. So his learning can never become blessing in his life when he leaves all of his family behind. The real righteous ones are those ones that knows how to represent the Creator to the rest of the people, to the rest of the world. Those ones that are lighthouses in the world, that they know how to shine, that they know how to behave, that they know how to show love, how to affect warmth and understanding, how to be kind. Today, in my house, my children were talking about righteous people. I had a conversation about few righteous people we met in our lives. Suddenly, one of my children mentioned the Biyana Rebbe today in this noon time in, 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 in our house. And my wife said to that child, she told him, you know why I think that the Biyana Rebbe is a righteous man? I'm going to tell you why. Because he's a good person. He's a, such a good person, and he cares about people, and he loves people, and he wants to help them, and that's why I know for sure that he is a righteous man. And this is an innocent opinion of a person that cares that people will be good. That's my wife's intention. That's what she wants from this world to become. Good place to live in. That people will be nice to each other. And that's what we all yearning for. A complete redemption. Like the main righteous rabbi, the main prophet, the main leader. The real one that saw the truth and delivered it to the world was Moshe Rabbeinu. The holy man. The man of God. Isha Elohim. The most humble person on the universe. And he knew exactly that even with the Creator, you must go all the way. Because when he is offering to you something, you need to find, to recognize the opportunity and not to let go. Because he knew that the Creator, and we should put that into our hearts. The Creator, He loves you more than you can imagine. You don't know what love is all about. We don't understand what it means to be loved by the Creator, to be chosen by the Creator. And we all been chosen by the Creator. Because when He, when the Creator is upset, when He is angry, what He decides, the Torah is telling us. He decides to hide His face from His people, to hide Himself from us. So now, if you saw his face, if you recognized him in your life, if you saw the individual supervision on your life, if you recognized even for a second that there is a trial, that there is justice, that there are no coincidences, that there is supervision that is running your life. If while learning, while praying, while hoping, while crying, you felt the existence of the Almighty, so it means that he chose you to reveal his being to you. That he wanted and chose you to show you that he exists, that he's here, that he's filling the world, that he's running all the systems, that he's on top of everything. Even if only one prayer in your life been answered, that was a clear evidence for you that Hashem decided to show you that He's with you. Now, if you really gonna think about it, that the Creator of the universe, of all the worlds, that He's on top and in charge of everything created and made and thought and still runs all of these huge, gigantic systems that atoms runs inside of it, Tell those tiniest details of creation, concepts of Kabbalah that are running the world, that only huge righteous people could describe and explain to simple people like us. All those details for him is tiny. And he chose you and communicating with you in your language, 
using your concepts and your slang to communicate with you through films, through movies, through shows, through people, through random conversations, through cab drivers that are taking you from one place to the other, signs in the streets that are telling you, signs that are communicating with you, and you see that the Creator is live. He chose you. If we will take that knowledge deep into our hearts, we won't doubt Him for a second ever again. And we will be so happy and so satisfied from our lives, no matter how our life will look like, because we're going to recognize that there is a supervisor, and we will decide to nullify ourselves to His will, and going to follow Him like lions, with no fear in our eyes, and not going to fall to that filthy sadness and depression, and despair that is destroying our lives. The main enemy that we have is our sadness. That's why we need to fight against it with all of our power. And not to back off and not to give up on our dreams forever, for good. Always to fight for the good. And even if you see that mountains of darkness surrounding you, horses of flaming fire are attacking you, with thunders and lightnings through their eyes coming to eat you alive, to run all over you and destroy you. You need not to be scared. You need to hold yourself together and to remind yourself Hashem is on my side and I'm not going to move from this point until I'm going to be answered, until I'm going to see wonders and miracles. If you think that you're a coward, that you're so scared and afraid, Open the book of Tehillim that's been written by the tears of King David and see over there a righteous, humble person that is writing with his sorrow, with his blood, with his sweat, with his tearing eyes. His cries to Hashem, save me, protect me, hide me, help me. I don't know what to do. I'm losing my mind. I became crazy. Prayers of a broken person. Who is he? Mashiach Tzidkenu. He is Mashiach. He is our Redeemer. He is our Savior. He is the one that has been chosen to walk with Hashem hand in hand in heaven. He is the one that received the eternal crown for the future to redeem us. David. He is the one. And he is crying. And he's screaming. And he never gives up on mercy. Because he knows that the Creator, he loves him in unconditional love. And even when he fails, he knows how to stand back on his feet. And to do tshuva. And to come back to Hashem. And to say, I regret. And to be a strong person. That got that courage and power to admit in his mistakes. That was his greatness. That was the moment that he'd been chosen to become the fourth will of the holy chariot of the Creator, ahead to our ancestors, Abraham, Yitzchak, and Yaakov. He became the main one of that holy chariot that takes the Creator and reveals the light of the Creator for the rest of the generations. He became ahead to that holy chariot. He rise to a highest level than Abraham, the head of the believers, of Yitzchak, his holiest child, and Yaakov, the head, the father of the holy tribes, the fathers of our nations. He became higher than them. Because of what? Because he was able to admit that he was wrong. In the moment that he admit that he messed up big time and he was able to say, I was wrong, then he been chosen to be the four will of the Holy Chariot, the head of the ancestors. This is the power of our tshuva, of the best, highest, most important and great gift that we 
as the last most pathetic low generation received from heaven as the key and the solution for our redemption. And Am Israel Nigalin Ela Bichuva. Am Israel cannot be redeemed with no other solution except of Chuva. And when they are doing Chuva, Miyad Hen Nigalin, immediately they're being redeemed. Been redeemed already. That's it. The end of the story. To be strong enough, honest enough, to be able to say, I'm sorry. I'm apologizing. I was wrong. I misinterpret your words. I disrespected you. I was not appreciating you enough. I was not serious enough. I'm sorry. I messed up. I was selfish. I was wrong. I was narrow-minded. I had my lust and my desires. I chose myself instead of you. I didn't care about you. I wasn't appreciating you enough. Say the truth. The truth is the only way to connect ourselves to the Creator. Because Hashem Elokechem Emet, your God is the God of truth. And we're mentioning that verse again in the end of Kriyat Shema. Hashem Elokechem Emet, that you'll go home with that. That you're not going to drop that verse in the synagogue and go home. No, Hashem, your God is the God of truth. And His seal is the seal of truth. And Hashem is close to everyone that calls Him with truth. And when people are lying, Katshakarim, that cult of liars, cannot receive the face of the Shekhinah, are not able to be in touch with the Creator. Because the verse is saying, Dover Shkarim Laikon Leneged Enav, a person that is a liar, that is lying, cannot stand in front of Hashem. When you're lying, you're turning your back away from Him. But when you're saying the truth, even the most pathetic, lousy truth of being a liar, admitting your lies, is already turning your face toward Him. And He starts communicating with you again. By the power of your tshuva, of your true tshuva, not of your effort to become religious. Not of your fears that are talking from your throat and your mouth. No. Today I was laughing. I couldn't hold myself from laughing. I remembered the first steps of my tshuva. It was hilarious. It was <laughs> Hilarious! I wasn't able to eat, I wasn't able to drink, I wasn't able to wake up in the morning, I wasn't able to go to sleep, I wasn't able to do anything. I was so trapped and obligated, I couldn't function. I couldn't talk to my wife. I was guarding my eyes like stupid in my house for my wife. I wasn't able to finish the food because you must leave something in the plate and you cannot eat with your hands like that and you cannot and you must read while you're eating and you have to say korbanot. In time of Suda you can finish Suda without reading all the korbanot. Half an hour just reading when you want to grab something to eat. You cannot wake up in the morning because you must wake up earlier. So how what are you going to do? You must go to sleep earlier, right? So your wife, she wants to talk to you. I'm sorry. That's it. Can't talk with your wife. Can't talk with your children. No time. Your kids, they want to learn. They want to speak with you. They want to have a father. No, you need to become someone. No, you need... What's that? It's craziness. That's what it is. It's sickness. It's the fears that are still got a hold of your mind because of your sins before of tshuva and they don't want to let you go and the only way that they're willing to let you go is crazy. If you go crazy, you can go. No problem. Go crazy. Go wild. No problem. They don't mind from which side of the cliff to push you. If you're going to die, they don't mind from which side. Oh, he died on the right cliff. Oh, he died on the left cliff. They don't mind. As long as you're dead, they're happy. <laughs> and even it's greater if you will become Haredi, you will become Dati. When you're done, you're done with your wife and eight children. So that's a great story. That's perfect. They want it. 
they're going to give you three, seven, five, eight years of quiet to multiply, and then they're going to kill you. And that's it. And then you're done. Eight children. Don't are lost. No problem. It's so easy to kill a person with eight children. It's like, it's one minute of work for the devil. He can kill you in a second. You have eight children, you're done. That's it. The secret is to connect yourself to the truth and not through your fears. Not through your anxieties. Oh, but I messed up. But you don't know what I've done. People are coming to me. I heard hilarious stories from terrified people that think for themselves that they are the worst creatures alive. But you don't know, Rabbi, what have I done? But you don't know, and I'm still, and I'm so embarrassed, and I don't want to tell you, and I can't describe, and I don't want to mention, and I don't want to impure your holy ears. Oh, come on! <laughs> Jokes! What have you done? Oh, you masturbating. Oh, wow. Oh, you went to a prostitute. Oh, wow. Oh, you were sinning with another man. Oh, wow. Oh, in that party you forgot in which bed you woke up. Oh, wow. Really? Oh, <laughs> so impressive. <laughs> jokes and jokes and jokes. So what? Anyway, your solution is to restart and to give yourself a chance to a new life. Anyway, you need to start your life again. Anyway, you need to work on your happiness. Anyway, you need to be sober and happy. Anyway, you need to love your, the fact that you are who that you are. Anyway, you need to start your life. I've been with a man. I've been with a woman. Okay, so now you know that it was wrong. Keep moving. What's the problem? Why can't you dance from the fact that you know now that you need to improve, that you need to work, that you have amazing opportunities here on earth? What is better than that knowledge that there is a creator and that his forgiveness is available and ready for us all, always? Because Shuvah is the answer to all sins, to all crimes, to all failures, to all mistakes. Tshuva, it's written in the Zohar HaKadosh, Tshuva Mo'il Lakol, is useful for everything. And if you're going to say that throwing away the holy seed against the will of the Creator, this is something that is unbearable, something that even the Zohar HaKadosh is saying that there is no forgiveness on that horrific sin. Rabbi Nachman of Breslev, that I'm counting on him, thank Hashem, and we can all count on him because he was a real pillar of fire. He said that no one in this generation, 200 years ago, students of the Baal Shem Tov, he said no one understands the simple intention and meaning of that Zohar page that is saying that there is no solution for Zerah Lebatala. And then he said, and I know the solution and the explanation on that verse, on that word. And it means that Tshuva can help you to fix it all. It's written no, but the real answer is yes. It's like when your father tells you, I'll never gonna forgive you, and it's a joke. It's a joke! It's a joke! I'm not gonna forgive my children, it's a joke! And who am I compared to the Creator? He's much greater than I, much more merc merciful than I, merciful than I. He's great! He's clean, he's the best! He forgives always! He accepts always! He loves always! And he said no. So what? Look what Moshe Rabbeinu is doing, making fun. Hashem is saying no. Moshe Rabbeinu is saying, please. Say, okay, yes, sir. okay, so show me. I'll show you. Okay, when? Tomorrow. Okay, I'm coming. And he's coming and bringing everyone with him. It's a party. He knows that the will of Hashem is greater than our understanding. When Hashem is saying to Moshe Rabbeinu, Moshe Rabbeinu, it's written in the Gemara that when Hashem said to Moshe Rabbeinu that he's about to decree, a horrible decree, and to destroy all of them and to kill them all. So Hashem said that horrible decree to Moshe, Heref mimeni v'ashmidem. Leave me alone for a moment and I'm going to destroy them all. I'm going to kill them all. Moshe was able to read 
between the lines. He understood that Hashem told him, leave me alone for a moment, and then I'm going to kill them all. So he realized that if he won't let Hashem go for a moment, Hashem won't do anything. So he went up to Mount Sinai and for 40 days was crying and begging and talking to Hashem, hoping and praying and convincing Hashem with all arguments and claims that he could think of. And by that he brought redemption until Hashem said to him, Salachti kidvarecha, I'm going to forgive them like you asked me to. And that's the end of the story. Because if you think to yourselves, that Moses was the man of God. And we need Moses. We need the Biale Rebbe. We need those righteous man, ones. I'm not saying that they're not amazing and useful. But you misinterpret the intention of telling us the stories on the greatest ones. Because you're not different than them. Because if you're going to work hard on yourself, you're going to become one of them. Because from an orange tree, you will never going to see bananas growing. And if your roots are coming from Mount Sinai, you are one of that family. You're one of that tribe. And from those holy ancestors, only holy people are coming out. Now the problem is that we disrespect ourselves. That we're not appreciating ourselves. That our self-esteem been destroyed by the evil inclination that is not stopping from buttering and plastering our mind with lies and lashonara and horrible things about ourselves. You're evil, you're pathetic, you're lousy, you're a failure. That's how you look. Look at yourself. You failed again. You don't have a chance. Oh, you sinned. You sinned so many times. There's no hope for people like you. And especially when you're a convert, you don't have a chance. But the Torah is telling us that Hashem loves the converts more than He loves the Jews. The Torah is describing five ways of love of the Creator to His chosen nation and six to the Gerim. To the one that joins Am Yisrael. So the arrogant ones from Am Yisrael, they are making a battle against the converts and proving them that they're not worthy and not letting them get inside. When the Zohar and the books of Kabbalah are describing the power and the greatness of the souls of the converts in ways that we can just be jealous of them, of having the power to cross the world from one side to the other and to stand in all those wars and struggles that they need to go through and to convert in the end. And don't forget that Gerim Eitem Beretz Mitzrayim. That it's a commandment that we're not allowed to mention to the Ger and to remind him that he's a convert. We're not allowed. Because we must hug him and accept him in the gates of Judaism. Judaism must be a home for the converts. And we must appreciate him of having the privilege that we never had by born Jewish. Do you know that you would choose like him to join Judaism if you were born non-Jew and not as a non-Jew, a Gentile? Abraham Avinu, he born as a Goy. He was the first convert. What are we talking about? Sarai Menu, she was a convert. We came from them. So we must accept everyone. And to see the spark of holiness in the eyes of people. You walk in the streets of Manhattan, you don't know who you see. You don't know if those are children of Holocaust survivors. You don't know if those are converts. You don't know if this is the seed of the Baal Shem Tov. You don't have a clue who you're talking to. I have an, a, a, a sister-in-law in Israel, that she is a manager of a television channel, secular TV in Israel, and she is the great granddaughter of the Baal Shem Tov. And she doesn't care about it even. And you don't know, secular woman, joke, you don't know who you 
are and you don't have a clue who your friend is, the real righteous ones, the real wise ones, are the ones that knows how to respect everyone, how to appreciate everyone, how to honor everyone, how to learn from everyone, and how to learn for themselves from every situation in their lives. Those are the chosen ones. Those are the children of God. The ones that are going and spreading faith in the world and distributing the light of love and confidence and hope in the world. Those are the real righteous ones. And you can be that one if you're just going to allow yourself to open your mouth and to speak the truth and to say that you're struggling but you're working on it. That you're trying and yes, you're failing. You're going to plant hope in the hearts of your surroundings. You're going to give strength into the hearts of people that are in similar situations, that are surrounding you for a reason, that they can enjoy from your light and you're supposed to enjoy from theirs. So you should shine to them the light of faith that is shining from within, that innocent faith of your childhood. To present and represent the Creator that is walking and escorting you from your first days on earth. To go and tell the truth to the world. That Hashem is here and His arms are open wide. And even if we haven't been answered completely yet, we're not giving up on hope. Thank you. 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 All the people that took effort to organize this amazing night, and I bless you that there will be always at least one more person more to join in this holy minyan forever. Amen. And there's food, and everyone are welcome to eat. The Muna Project that I'm representing is a non-profit organization, and we have an amazing website, amuna.com. We're on all social media outlets. You. You cannot avoid us, <laughs> thank God. And you're welcome to support us and to enjoy our content and to share it with your friends, thousands of classes and short classes and everything. Thank you, Hashem bless you. Thank you, We hope you enjoy this video very much. Please now remember to subscribe and like this video and share it with your friends to help spread faith in the world. For more, please visit amuna.com. May your light shine always and your request should be answered with the greatest blessings. Amen.